very, you're very fun to look at, and you're, and you're very <laughs> good you. at just like nailing it. Um, so I'll just say everything, and you can cut out anything that you don't want. I'll just be as it's authentic. Yeah, I just think, I just think it would be good to have a talk about helping people because it's not as simple as like. I think a lot of people see my videos and they see, they see Caroline who we just spoke to, or we see. Oh, it's, it's an endless list of people that come in here. And, oh my God, they just need this, that, and the other. Don't you help them? And I'm sure we could probably shed a little light on what helping these people is actually like. Sure. Because it's what you do, right? Yeah, so I mean, since the first video, um, you and I have tried to help a number of people. Um, I always try to basically have interface with someone. So if Mark or anyone else says to me, I have someone who really needs support. I want to sit down with them and I want to hear from them directly. I prefer if they're not um, high, but I understand sometimes that's unavoidable, especially when it comes to things like crack, because then it's really challenging um, because crack does so much to your psyche. Crack is harder to deal with than heroin or... In my experience, I'm not a doctor, but in my experience, because of like the psychosis may not be the correct term, but because of what happens to someone when they're high on crack, the visions, the voices, it's really challenging to even get to the core of a person. I mean, they're all, they're all terrible drugs and they're all... They're all awful. But in terms of interfacing to find out if someone is ready for treatment and if they really want this, it's more challenging with meth and crack than it is some of the other drugs. For me, anyway. Um, maybe that's, I don't know why would that would be, but that's how it's been because I can't get to a person. So um, since the first video, you've brought a number of people to me. If they show up, for the meeting, like we just had one, and they left in the middle of it um, because they were hallucinating. What, what, what or, did she say? Uh, no, I think I think I'm good. And she just yeah, we were in the middle of talking about what treatment looks like and what her dreams would be moving forward, and she just said, "I'm good," and left. Yeah. And, no, and, and 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 just to add, there have been a couple. There have been more than a couple people that I've tried to help in a serious way, like because what you're offering is basically housing. An education, Anything. job, job training, therapy, yeah. rehab, the whole thing on a silver platter. All you got to do is show up. Yeah. And we've had a couple people, there were a couple teenage people that everyone was screaming at, oh my God, why don't you help these people? So we lined it all up with you, with your organization, uh, Patrick Katie. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to name names, but if you watch my channel, you'll figure out who I'm talking about. So we, were, we arranged an appointment for that person to show up with you and me and, and we're gonna lay it all out for how we're gonna save your life. Yeah. We don't say it that way. We just like, you know, would you like rehab? Would you right. like housing? Would you like an education? Would you like some job training? Would you like some therapy? They say yes, and they fail to show up for the appointment. Yeah. And then we give them a second chance. Yes, always. And again, they fail to show up. Yeah. So ultimately it becomes more about getting them to accept being, being fulfilled and happy in life, yeah. which, which is the biggest hurdle. It's, it's really challenging, and I don't fault the people that don't show up, and I don't have any frustration toward them. I just think it's important to give context, and that context is these people have gone their entire lives, most of them, being abused and being told that they are nothing. So even if they are presented with an opportunity that you want to give them or that Patrick Katie wants to give them, or, or is it Aurora? Oh, Aura. Aura, or that Aura wants to give them, it's... It seems so unreal that I think it, it just, it's like some sort of fantasy alternate reality to where they are and they deserve the help, but the mental health aspect is what we don't really have a grasp on and what brings someone to the streets a lot of time and what brings someone to drugs is where they're at mentally and the abuse and the mistreatment that's taken place. So it's like, you think, oh, well, here's this, here's this opportunity that people would just be running and lining up. But that doesn't even align with what brings someone to be in this place in the first place, mm -hmm. right? If things were that easy, they wouldn't be here. No, it's, yeah, it's, it, as I said, I think in the last Norman video, it's, it's not about drugs. Yeah, no. Drugs are not the issue. Drugs are just a, They're a symptom of, of, yeah. of the much, much deeper and more stubborn problem of loving yourself and being able to accept a better life for yourself. Yeah. Which they can't. And and 
And how do you fix somebody's childhood? I don't Can't. even know. It's like even the people that I do get through to that we do work with, they even after they've been sober for a year or two, it, it doesn't go away. And if anything, it gets louder. So kind of like I talked about before, it's 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 such a large hurdle. And it's so unbelievable to most people that someone would come in out of nowhere and make us a, a real effort to just give them more opportunity when they've been taught over and over for decades that they don't deserve those opportunities. So it's just, I mean, even when we posted the last video, I got a number of inquiries through Patrick Katie Foundation website and I didn't get a single person that actually followed up with me. I emailed everybody back. I said, set a time to have a call with me. Let's discuss whether it be them or their child or whatever. I did have one mom that did respond to me that was saying, that explained her daughter's situation. And I said, okay, I just need your daughter to call me because I'm not gonna get somebody through treatment if I can't talk to them first. There's no world where I can even be of support or anyone else in our foundation can do anything. If the person isn't willing to have a conversation, her daughter never called me. And it's not anyone's fault, but it's so deeply ingrained in people that end up in these situations. And it's, it's such a, it's, again, it's such a large hurdle. And there's, we have to have such patience, like for what you do, I see you give money to people all the time. It takes such patience to not get frustrated or lose hope because all that we want at the foundation, all that I want as a human being is to take care of other people and help other people. And when nobody will show up and meet me or if they meet me and they walk out, it's like, oh shit, like how do I help? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's what you're doing here is awareness. Awareness is how we help well, because I, I, it's I a concerted effort. I mean, I, I do more than my share of help. You, you do, just, I, I, a lot. I, and, I, <laughs> and I try not to, show that because I don't want this to be a help channel. This is right. not a, this, this, cha this channel I'm doing is not about, oh, let's help this person, let's help Caroline, let's help whoever, name, name your person. Um, it's about creating awareness so that we can prevent this because I see that as the real solution. Because I don't think we can patch all these people. No. The, 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 there are thousands of people here and just on Skid Row and there are other communities like this all across the country and in every viewer's hometown, I guarantee you, Absolutely. there are people just like this. So you don't need to like travel across the country and fix Caroline. You need to just, if you want to help these people, figure out somebody right in your backyard that's doing it, yeah. doing, doing the same damage to themselves. But yeah. the purpose of this channel is not about helping Caroline. Right. The purpose of this channel is to show you how keeping families intact and together and, and supporting communities that are re you know, just churning over generation after generation after generation of these uneducated, damaged people from broken families, that's going to be the solution. Because I don't think we can fix Caroline or, or I mean, you know, a lot of these people that we're going to, let's say we did help. Let's say we got them rehab, we got them in education, we got them some job training, we got them some therapy. They still have a, a long, long list of problems, like the inability to trust others, the inability to create trust from others, the inability to, to handle money. They see money, they burn it. It's what they do. They, they don't know they don't any understand better. Saving the person money. doesn't know. No they one's taught them to save money. They don't understand postponed gratification. They don't understand anything you need to do to fulfill your life, to be functional and have a you know yeah. happy life. Yeah. That's why I think prevention is the answer, and that's the purpose of this channel. It's not about fixing these people because I don't know that you, me, and one hundred and fifty thousand other people could actually help. Caroline. Yeah. Or whoever, who could just walked out of here. Yeah. Um, it's such a big problem. And it's so difficult to help each and every one of these people. The purpose, again, I'm saying it for the 400th time, is let's see what's broken about our society so that this doesn't mm -hmm. happen. Because mm -hmm. it's going to happen again and again, and it's going to yeah. grow, and it's, it's already growing. Look around your town. Right. I know. Drugs ever since Ever since COVID, downtown and Skid Row is just grown exponentially. Well, it's not even about COVID. COVID is a whole other problem that yeah. makes it worse. But, but it's just growing gr and growing and this growing. This was growing rapidly for the last 10, 20 years, and I'm yeah. sure it's going to continue unless we do some things to address what's causing yeah. it. And for us as a, as a nonprofit, we do intend to help. But 
it's just important that people understand what help really looks like and who is actually willing to receive that help because it's proven to be exceptionally challenging to find people that even want the help. That's right. That's it right there. Nobody really, they say they want it on video. I mean, there, there have been a couple of people that sat where you're sitting and said, I just wish somebody yeah. would help me. Right. And your eyes start watering and your heart opens up and you want to help them. And when, when the rubber hits the road, they actually don't want the help. Right. They can't accept it. It's not, it's not, and, and the answer is not to, oh, just, well, let's screw them and forget about them. Right. Because I believe, I'm not religious, but I believe you need to be like Jesus and just keep giving him yes. a chance, keep giving yes. him a chance. Even when they screw up for the 15th time, yep. you keep giving him a chance. That's patience. We that's have pa to have that's that. what you need. And it requires so much. And I can't do it for all of the 2,000 people plus that I've interviewed. Right. And there's, there's 12,000 more that I haven't interviewed. They're all surrounding me here. Yeah. Uh, it's, just, it's just too much for one person. And if you guys all want to fly out to L.A. and fix everybody on Skid Row, come on out. But there's people <laughs> in your hometown in New Jersey or Philadelphia or Miami or Chicago, wherever, that, that are in the same exact situation. So yeah. you don't need to come here. This is, this is not just a, an odd situation that happens in L.A. This is happening all across the country and probably all over the world. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And it's it really just boils down to awareness and the willingness to be patient and the willingness to understand the human condition enough to love these people outside of what you're seeing on your YouTube channel. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. somebody taught them that that's what they were worth. So again, it goes back to how we're treating these children, how we're keeping these families, what we're doing systemically to support people who need support. That's where we actually break this cycle. And as far as the people who are already here, we'll do everything we can, but it's hard. Yeah, I had lunch with you a month ago and, and you said one of the most interesting things I've ever heard, which I can't stop thinking about, which is like, what, 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 cause it's, it's, a, it's a recycling, you know, multi-generational problem. It keeps every family keeps doing the same thing to their own and they, it just goes on and on. And I go, when did this start? Did it get worse? And you said, no, this is how the country was built. I'm paraphrasing, but you said something like, this is how the United States was created. A bunch of Europeans came here, raped and stole from the Indians. And that generation did it to the following, you know, it just continued on and it looks different. Every hundred years, it looks different. So now it's about homelessness and drugs and all that kind of stuff. But 100 years ago, it was it looked very different, but it was all the same problem. It was all the same problem. And, and things were just more separate. Yeah, um, it's what the country was built on. With the with the with the Internet and everything else, we're getting exposed to things that have been existing for the entirety of this country's history. But before it was hidden away in the projects or wherever it was and, and p other people, people like us that are privileged, didn't see it. But it is we this country started out with a violent, with a violent um, intent. It was built on violence. It was built on violence. So to unlearn that, we have to figure out how to have more of a sense of community. And that comes in at all angles. Not everybody should be helping. Not everybody should be doing something. We just have to figure this out. And like you said, be like Jesus and have some patience and understanding for people. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a huge problem. It's growing and patching the broken ones is not the answer. That's a, that's a simplistic a attitude. Yeah. I think you have to think much bigger, which is the purpose of my channel. It's like, let, let's, let's look at what's wrong, what's wrong, what's broken so that we can start figuring out how to solve it. Cause I don't even know if doing things to keep families together would even work or, or be the total solution. Cause then there's still the lack of hope in these right. communities, the lack of like, it's so, it runs so deep and it's so complicated and systemic that it's, it seems impossible at times. But if we all start to have the same conversations, it becomes more and more possible. Exactly. I, I think, you know, you can say it's about the family. You can say it's about the lack of education or the, or the lack of opportunities in the, in the, some of the communities that these people grow in, grow up into. But Ultimately, I hate to be one of these people, but it's like, it's ultimately about love. Yeah. And if Blue Oyster Cult ever wants their name back,
Yeah. I would change the name to unconditional love because that's really what it's all about. That's what we're missing. We're divided by politics. We're divided by race. We're divided by all these things that aren't doing us any good. We have to learn how to fall back in love with ourselves and with our, each other and with the community that we're a part of because we have to take care of this world. We only get one and that's it. So you and I'll keep doing our part and everybody can do something, no matter how small it is, buy the person behind you when you're at Walmart, buy their stuff. You know, if it's a mom with three kids and you can tell she's struggling and you're okay, just buy it. Just do something to give other people hope. Hmm. Beautifully said. Monica, you're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. This is just an impromptu thing. We were trying to, yeah. <laughs> we were trying to meet Caroline to, to help her get on in one of your programs and she turned on her heels and ran away. And it's okay, because if she decides she wants it again, I'll meet with her again. Yeah, no, I love Carolina. She's the great, she's my original, like the first friend I really made down here and I've known her for 10 or 11 years and it, it breaks my heart every time I see her out there trying to pick up some guy who's just gonna. Yeah, that's hard. Give her 30 bucks for some crazy act that she's gonna do. And I know. And it's just so sad that uh, you're but doing we'll your keep part. Going. Yeah, you're amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much.